Good morning. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church. If you're here with us live or with us on live stream, we're glad you're here. Just a few announcements before we get started this morning. <clears throat> after, fellowship, after service today, we do have fellowship scheduled. Um, we have pie. And I think it's great that we have pie for the birthday of Christianity. Uh, I think that might be a not bad thing. It's not cake, but it's pie. It's even better. So join us for that after the service. We'd love to have you have some good conversation and some good pie. Uh, also, tomorrow we are having our Monday night chosen Bible study. We all voted and said we were going to be done with our festivities by then, so we want to still meet at 7 o'clock here at the sanctuary to watch another episode of The Chosen and continue forward with our Bible study. So join us if you're interested. Uh, if your festivities are done and you don't normally come to that Monday night Bible study, we'd glad, be glad to have you. Um, All righty. Wednesday, we have a Bible study going on with Barb. Is that correct? And that's the Courtyard Bible Study. And that happens at your apartment building's court courtyard. And if you're interested in finding out more information about that, contact Barb or contact the church office. We'll get you the information you need so that you can attend to that. They are currently working on the, the Lord's Prayer as part of their Bible study. So dive, taking a deep dive into the Lord's Prayer and what it means. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of June, which means that we have Pastor Nathan here uh, doing communion service. So please join us for that. Uh, additionally, um, that morning at 9 a.m., he has a Bible study that starts, and it's a Zoom Bible study. So you can join them and us at that Bible study by going to our website at slcw.org and clicking that link that says click here to join group. He normally has at least one good joke out of many and has some great uh, lessons about parables that we're learning about. Um, one bad bit of news, and I'm sure most of you know already at this point, but last Wednesday we lost one of our, our favorite Charlies, and that is Charlie Radabaugh. Uh, he passed away on Wednesday, and his funeral is set for this coming Tuesday at McIntyre um, the, the McIntyre Funeral Home. I'm, I'm never good with all three of their names. Uh, but that's at 11 a.m. Uh, with a burial at Worcester Cemetery following. Now, after that, at 1 o'clock, we are hosting a meal here at Salem Lutheran Church in the basement in the, the Fellowship Hall. So um, please join us in celebrating the life of Charlie. Are there any announcements that I forgot to mention? Hearing none, we will forward a few, a few more. Gee, I wonder why they didn't go forward there. Keep going. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Join me in the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection 
strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Please join me in singing our gathering here, hymn, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. It is found in the red hymnal, hymn 400. Please rise and join me in singing. God of tempest, God of whirlwind, as on Pentecost he sent, drive us out from shelter. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
pray. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word. Our first reading, sorry, I had to find it, <laughs> is from Acts 2, 1 through 11. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered <clears throat> because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deed of power. The word of God Thanks be, be to, to God. God. at the end. 
Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 12, 3b through 13. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestations of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one body, for in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, as we now ask that you open our hearts and minds to your word, that we may hear and learn, as in his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to Pentecost. It's a great day. Everybody's wearing red. I see a lot of red out there. Thank you very much for that. That's awesome. Um, It's also Memorial Day weekend, so there's all kinds of different colors being flagged, uh, the flags flying this week. It's a long weekend. Take time to remember those who fought and died for our country. 
because as we all know, freedom isn't free. Thank you to all who have given their lives in service of others, the ultimate sacrifice and the epitome of Christ-like service. Pentecost. The term is derived from the Greek word meaning 50th, and it is observed on the 50th day after Easter Sunday. In ancient times, this time frame of 50 days, or seven weeks, was used to celebrate the harvest. And for Jews, they called it Shavuot, which was the remembrance of seven weeks after Passover, the Passover when Pharaoh said, go, and Moses brought the law, or Torah, down from Mount Sinai. In Moses' time, he brought the law of the covenant to the Israelites, the first covenant with God. And some believe that in Jesus, well, in Jesus' time, the Spirit descended upon the disciples, establishing the new covenant with God. And some believe that this Pentecost constituted the moment that the Christian faith was born, the birthday of Christianity. So, happy birthday. Let's eat some pie. Now, the story from our first lesson from Acts chapter 2 tells of a very interesting story of rushing violent wind, tongues of fire resting on the disciples, languages that previously were not known were now being spoken and understood by people who were visiting the area from other nations. The, apostle, the disciples were filled with Holy Spirit. God was moving through that spirit on earth and into his people. The promise that was made about an advocate was fulfilled at Pentecost. It seems like a crazy story, however, a crazy scenario, people speaking languages that they never spoke before, crazy flames of fire over people's heads. It seems like it just is unbelievable. In our gospel lesson today, slightly different story than in Acts, Christ gave his disciples the spirit. That was on the first evening of Easter. This story of the spirit in the world goes back to the beginning of all creation. The living breath of God breathed life into the world when the spirit blew over the waters of the earth. The spirit was active among God's people before Christ's coming. In the Hebrew scriptures, we reveal several places about the spirit of the Lord or the spirit of God working to guide God's people. The spirit comes upon Samson in Judges chapter 15, giving him the power to fight the enemies of Israel, single-handedly wiping out armies against Israel. To David, when he is anointed to be king in 1 Samuel, the spirit comes down and then to one of Judah's prophets in Jeremiah 29 who instructs God's people in a time of crisis. The Spirit moved over Mary, descended upon Jesus at his baptism, and accompanied and empowered his ministry. The arisen Christ gave the Spirit to the church with authority to forgive sin and call sinners to faith in his saving work. The Spirit has been active and present since the dawn of time. When the Spirit acts or moves, Whomever or whatever needs to happen, happens. So as in our gospel lesson today, the risen Christ comes to his disciples and says it twice, peace be with you. And says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. The mission that they are to go on will bear the mark of the cross. Jesus says, receive the Holy Spirit and breathe on them. Spirit moved in the disciples and gave them the skills and tools necessary to complete the tasks that Jesus laid out for them. Still to this day, this type of spirit movement happens in and among us. The spirit moved them when they were ready, having everything they needed. They didn't have to get things in order, they just had to act. There was a man, uh, we'll call him Bill, who was a really good mechanic. For some reason, he had this crazy idea. He was a successful mechanic in his own right, but he didn't think he was doing much for his community. 
he didn't see himself helping those in need. And being a new Christian, he felt that it was something that he should be doing. The idea was something that had been on, in his head, in his mind for some time, but he kept pushing it back to the back area, the deeper areas of his brain, because it just didn't seem likely. But it remained. What was the idea? Well, to start doing car repairs for free for those who most needed it. He had many questions, however. It kept preventing him from starting or acting on this crazy idea. He would ask, how can I pay my bills? How could I retain or my, my building for, the, for my mechanic shop if I'm basically doing it for free? How can I pay my employees? It seemed like the crazy idea that he had had no hope of a future. One day he woke from a deep sleep, shocked, stunned into wake, and the idea had entered his dreams. He was shook. He felt at that moment as if he had been called to make his free mechanic business happen. Not coincidentally, as we all know, later that day he got a call from a local pastor. And this pastor had no idea about his idea for a free mechanics business. The pastor asked about sending over a parishioner who had needed some car repairs. And the pastor warned him or cautioned him, Bill, this parishioner doesn't look like he can afford the repair. Bill said, send him over. We'll see what we can do. The car, a 1990 Chevy Caprice, needed a lot of work done. Too much work done. Bill looked over it and found that just for the parts was going to run him over $2,000. He didn't think that he could spare that kind of money just out of his pocket. And the pastor didn't have that kind of money available. It looked like a lost cause. That evening, Bill's brother gave him a call, a brother that he hadn't talked to in a while. He said, hey, Bill, I have this car that's sitting in one of my properties that's just been abandoned there. I need... I was wondering, do you, if you want it for parts, you could take it, free of charge. That car was towed to his garage the next day, and much to his surprise, it was a 1990 Chevy Caprice with all of its parts working. So the spirit moved and provided everything that was needed for the repair, free of charge. That's a crazy story, right? Well, Bill realized at that time that it seemed it was time for him to start his free mechanic business. And for some reason, donations and volunteers showed up out of nowhere. The living breath of God came over Bill and his new business. The living breath of God came over Mary and brought Jesus to earth. The living breath of God, present in the waters of baptism. The living breath of God descended on the disciples on the day of Pentecost. It was time for them to begin their ministry. The living breath of God is present in you today. But that idea that has been bubbling up in your mind, is there something in the back of your mind right now that you've been considering doing for a while? Something that you have pushed to the back regions of your mind because... You never thought it could actually happen. But we've all heard the saying, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Are you being pulled or prodded to, an act, to act on something that's been in your mind? Are you feeling called to act on some special project? Maybe it's just participating in Bible study, like Barb's Courtyard Bible study, or our Monday night Bible study, or our Sunday morning Bible study. Maybe it's helping with the community food pantry project as we get it installed in the back corner of our parking lot. Or the Zion meal. Maybe it's helping with the gardening and grounds maintenance around our building. Maybe it's helping with the avenues worship. By the way, it's happening this afternoon. I forgot to mention that. Maybe it's with Mocha House, Salvation Army, Goodwill, Habitat for Humanity, the Village Network, Maybe it's getting involved with leadership opportunities right here. Maybe it's wanting to start a prayer chain. Maybe it's a ministry that only you 
have an idea for. Playing an instrument, singing in part of the service, assisting during the services itself, being a lector, being a greeter, being an usher, being an offering counter, altar guild, communion assistant, or even quilt maker. No matter what your gifts are, they are gifts from God for your ministry. Some of the gifts are obvious. Some might not be. They are all gifts of the Spirit, given to you for the sharing of Christ's gifts of grace in the world. So join me in sharing your gifts with us. With these Spirit-given gifts, whatever they are, those gifts are needed here in our ministries and our community. As the Spirit moved over the disciples on Pentecost, let us all be moved to action. Take action today on that thought that keeps prodding you. Be open to the Spirit moving and working through you. Let the fire in your heart burn strongly to do his will. It might just turn out to be something that will not only help others, but it might just pay dividends that are yet to be realized to yourself. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for your gift of grace. Thank you for the talents that you have given to us. And thank you for the opportunity to serve you with these gifts. Help us to be less resistant to your spirit. Help us to be open to its movement in us. Help us to recognize that you have prepared a way for us to be successful and give us the fire in our hearts to see it through. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now join me as we sing our, get, our hymn of the day, hymn 407 in the red hymnal, O Living Breath of God. Please rise. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the re resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. 